Hi guys, this is a case study of British apologist for Islam, a male, a ginger, who wants to go by the Arabic name of Hamza. I will address his claims as well as point out mistakes, misrepresentations and deceptive statements. Over the years, I've stumbled across this apologist several times and have demonstrated using his own videos and extracting data and facts that he knows next to nothing about anything scientific, atheists and reality in general. In these videos, he displays a total lack of rational, logical and most importantly, critical thinking. So, I largely ignored his pretty shallow apologetics as well as his uninformed and useless rants. He has been educated by knowledgeable people in several areas, but he either refuses to learn or is unable to learn anything new and simply reverts to his previous false information. But now, he has inserted himself into discussions between Muslims and non-Muslims, making a lot of noise. Now, since I'm not a Christian, Jew, Sikh, Hindu, Rasta, or a member of any other God-based group, I'm focusing on his input regarding a theist from the view of a Muslim. And I am taking the viewpoint of those who don't believe gods or goddesses exist. Now, what we need to accept right off the bat is that our Hamza here is a bigot, saying things like, I believe the Quran is the word of Allah. I believe Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. If what you've got doesn't reconcile with that, I'll throw it away. So you can't bring up anything at all to convince him of his mistakes, ignorance and fallacies. And of the mistakes, ignorance and fallacies in the book he worships, the Quran. And yes, it is a form of worship. If you do show that reality differs from the Quran, he shuts down completely, pushes the big red panic button and launches the Islamic apologist's last resort, the Islamophobe shield, adding the attributes hatred and racism while running away to hide, covering his ears and eyes so nobody can see or hear him, I guess. But they can't hide and at times are confronted and then they are forced to use dishonest tactics and, well, I call them lies and deceit. And they know full well what they are doing and saying is wrong, but do it anyway to deceive others. That's why they send me messages, obviously very proud of themselves, that I am blocked on their channels and when this is insufficient, they try and silence me using unlawful censorship by making false copyright claims. They managed, yeah, they did. They, get, they got my entire channel deleted from YouTube. But um, yeah, everything was reinstated once somebody actually looked at it and found everything to be perfectly in order, above board and legal. But because this Hamza and people who are part of this EF Dawa group, they, they are so bad at what they're doing, Lies and deceit, that's all they have. Uh, what does block stop spanning? Yeah, it is, it is, it is. Uh, I'll tell you why, yeah. I'll probably be blocking most of you guys from the Gin and Tonic show. And the reason being is you've built your platform on um, humiliating and trying to uh, attack Islam. Uh, that's your platform. And you don't need that here. So if you want to hate, you can hate on your own channel. But no, I've been advised uh, not to have you guys around. So yeah, so stop spamming um, probably has been blocked. No problem at all with that at all. Give them a chance. Um, but like I say, I was told, those that are blatant Islamophobes attacking Islam and building their platform on attacking Islam as a Muslim, alhamdulillah, you won't be doing it here. Okay. So yes, it is acceptable. Yeah, no, no. Um, they're from this genotonic show, which is an anti-Islamic platform, and they're trying to rebuild their channel because they're dying. And so they need um, to go on other people's uh, channels to try and boost their profile and say, oh, come and debate on our channel. Um, and I've been told they're Islamophobes, complete. And their platform is that. And so it's pointless. Because as soon as we get to Islam, as soon as we start talking about Islam, that's where they're going to start with all this nonsense. And we don't need it. Here, here we're trying to uh, establish what's true. And trolls to a point, no problem. But when my brothers who are more experienced in the tower advise me, alhamdulillah, I'll follow that advice. Uh... No, I'm aware. I'm aware of who people are. I remember, I remember Anibia Blocks up something on the EFL channel, if I'm not wrong. Um, 
and like I say, I take uh, you know wisdom is learned from the experience of others. I don't need to make the same mistake others maybe have made. So, he it. openly states there will be no communication and no dialogue attempt between rational people who know Islam and inform people about the ideology, helping Muslims and non-Muslims alike to understand and handle Islam in the 21st century, the gin and tonic shower. And people like him, bigoted Muslims who are self-absorbed and unwilling to accept reality, are not being recognized. So he pushes back, rejects and ignores attempts to develop a common understanding. Well, then it will have to be a very one-sided and one-way communication, using videos to get the message across. Now, what I'm going to do is I'll go through some of the stuff he put into tiny TikTok videos where he glowed all the stable genius, patting himself on the back, while delivering pretty much nothing but baloney and misunderstood drivel. Now, if you're a Muslim, I hope you've realized that I'm not bashing all Muslims. I'm not dishing out hatred or something. I'm just criticizing this dishonest bigot and his false claims. If you're a non-Muslim, I hope you realize the claims made by Muslim apologists today are usually false claims and quite easy to refute once you spot the tactic employed. Now, what I appreciate is something that was stated by Dr. Yasir Qadi, the two most important things he said, well, apart from the deficiencies and reliability issues in the Quran, is A, that there is a red line beyond which a Muslim may not research, and B, Muslims in general are kept in the dark about possible inconsistencies, contradictions and mistakes in the Quran. And this, in addition to the lack of rational, logical and critical thinking capabilities, this leads to the toxic environment we detect around Islam apologetics. Okay, I'm going to collect these short snippets addressing Hamza's claims in a playlist to either listen to one by one or all in one go, depending on your personal preference. So have fun. See you in the next video. Thanks for taking an interest. And if you appreciate what I do, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, which of course is possible, give me a thumbs down. But do me a favor and tell me why so that I can learn from this. Thank you. See you. Ciao.